Today I'm in New York City and I'll be spending my entire day with the 18 year old 7 figure entrepreneur. I met Ethan not too long ago through social media and I got him in a guest speaker lecture for my private community at Startpreneurs and honestly after hearing about his story, I gotta say that I'm impressed. We'll take a look at how he got started from zero to where he is today and I can promise you that after watching this video, you'll be inspired to start your own online business as well. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe and without further ado, enjoy the video. Alright guys, so we just got to Ethan's apartment in New Jersey and you just want to show us around your Pardon me, give us a Let's quick view, it. a quick tour. We got, so we got the the living room here. We got the, the, the cloud couch so with nice. uh, the Travis Drake, Pop Smoke, J. Cole posters. Oh my God. It had nothing there before, so it's new. We have a nice view of the rocks mm -hmm. on the right, or you could look to the left and there's New York City. Right here, right there. Make sure you guys look right there. Yes, sir. Pretty fire. Uh, I see the YouTube play button too. That's my roommate. That's his roommate. Yeah, he used to be like a Fortnite streamer. Um, oh, I got some stuff from my international trips. This is from Africa when I went there. Uh, <laughs> <Like a> little... <laughs> I bought this in Spain. I uh, thought it was cool. And some shot glasses. Little yeah. custom ones, you know? Need those, need those. Oh yeah, so I moved here January 15th uh, from Michigan with my roommate that I met online actually. He was doing like NFT marketing and stuff and I got him into sneakers. And now he sells on Amazon, but I just met him online. Like almost all my friends are from online. So, <laughs> so I mean, if you guys didn't know, I met Ethan online as well, obviously. Um, he had a, he came on SP a few months ago, had a lecture there. So that was pretty cool. I just thought his story was just extremely inspiring. And especially like for your age, you're currently 18, right? Yeah. yeah. 18. And then, I mean, he has his own apartment. He uh, dropped out of college. So we got to get into that story later. But yeah, I mean, the apartment's super nice. How much are you paying per month for something like this right now? It's about 5K a month. But it's split because I got a roommate, but uh, yeah. Yeah. It's fire though because I got free charging for the Tesla. So. Free charging for the that Tesla. Was the, that was, and because the thing is here in New Jersey, there's like nothing new. Mm -hmm. So this was like the only one that was new and available. All the other ones are around yeah. like 4K. Like this one over here is like 4K a month. Yeah. But everything's like super old. So yeah. I like how it's like modern. Mm -hmm. And uh, a furnishing this, bro, this is so tax. Yeah. Like the yeah. couch is like 3K. Yeah. It's stupid. I mean, it's super clean. Like yeah. it's super clean. Yeah. yeah Everything's super idea. organized. You guys cook or no? I mean, bro, let's show you <laughs> let's the see, Let's see the fridge. Let's see the You're fridge. You ready? It's a joke. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we don't have any drinks. They don't cook. Bro, we don't oh have any. I cook eggs and I'll put some cheese on it. And that's about it. That's about it though. Maybe some hot sauce. Oh my god. But, uh, so you just eat out all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll cook breakfast here and there. Yeah. Or we'll go to Oat Bagel. Yeah. Uh, I, we just had it. It's actually super yeah. good. You put me on. You put me on. Each exactly one is food reviews. Go check it out. Good. Super good. Super good. <laughs> Got over here. The bathroom is so modern. The bathroom is actually I like super a nice. lot. Oh my god. It's fire. Oh, um, you gotta give it. Bro, it's super <laughs> nice. And this is my room. So this is where all the magic happens right here. <laughs> That's what they all do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got my bed, we got my desk where I have all my work stuff, computer, my camera equipment, all my stuff this here. This is pretty much where you do majority of your work, right? Yeah, everything here, or if I'm traveling, I just take my computer. God, I was just in Spain for a week, I just ran everything off my computer, yeah. like my MacBook, so. I take mean, a yeah. look at the whiteboard too, guys. Uh, you, can't, you can't show all of it. <laughs> you can't show all of it. <laughs> Where you can show it shows 100K a month like, right. is $3,333 a day. Is that the goal right now? Or that is the goal. That's profit though. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the current goal. I'll be there soon. You just gotta add some more customers into the Yeah, you wanna tell the people what you're currently doing right now in terms of numbers, across all your businesses, just a rough estimate. Across everything, like per month or like per year? Let's like, just say per month. Per month. Per month. Like, um, in revenue, well over around like 150,000 just for my like software businesses. Um, sneakers, doing a couple hundred thousand. It kind of depends. Uh, I haven't been selling as much lately, but back I was doing multiple millions per year in sales, just yeah. wholesaling. Uh, even back, like I sold, before I turned 16, I sold over $2 million worth of shoes in like just two years. And guys, he's 18 years old, so like yeah. it's just crazy, right? It's crazy that um, you start your business from zero. We could say yeah, you maybe your 50 bucks. 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, no. When did you start reselling sneakers, by the way? Tell them like, you know, tell them like, the journey of how you got started, how old well, you were, and then... Um, I actually got a good story for that. So okay. in eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, I really wanted the Yeezy 350 blue tints. Okay. And my parents wouldn't buy them because they were like so expensive. They were like probably like 400 at that the time. Bad, that was bad. That was, yeah. was like the hype. Yeezys were yeah. popping. And so what I did is I had kids in my school that had like normal Air Forces or bands, things like that. 
that would be like 20 bucks to clean your shoes. And but it was like a recurring thing because yeah. people kept beating them up. And their parents would come give me the 20. Yeah. And I kept stacking. Well, the parents would give me the Yeah, they gave me the 20. <laughs> So it kept stacking and once I got like 300 bucks, I went on GOAT, I bought a used pair. And I'd, since I already had all the kits, like Rejuvenator and all that, I just cleaned up the Yeezys, they looked fine. And then for like a year I wore them, I actually wore them to, to Hawaii and ruined yeah. them. Like all the red clay and stuff yeah. on it. I cleaned them and I ended up selling them for like 400 bucks because they went up in value. Yeah. So I'm like, why would I buy a normal pair of like, just like Air Forces or like, Anything like that, you know, just normal like Reeboks or whatever yeah. for like 150 when I could make profit off of wearing a shoe that I like. So that was kind of when it clicked for me. So I was like, I just started going on eBay. I made my first Instagram account uh, and just kind of like started buying used shoes off auctions on eBay mm -hmm. for like 200 bucks Jordan's Yeezys, cleaning them, reselling them back on eBay and Instagram. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? This was going into like freshman year, so it was probably like so 14, 15, 15, 14, 14. Yeah, well, I'm young for my age. Yeah. Everyone my age is like 19 right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like my technically like freshman in college. Yeah. Probably like 14 or 15, yeah. And then uh, my cousin actually, he he was into botting, Project Destroyer. Yeah. That was a big thing back then. So I started kind of learning about that. I joined my first cook group, Juice Sneakers. I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but. No idea. <laughs> I joined <laughs> that. But I mean, I guess that's kind of like the modern day, like startuppreneurs, things yeah. like that. So I joined that, it really helped me. There was like a big channel of like wanting to buy one to sell. And that's why I pretty much started doing my bottom. Cause it provided all the resources for you. Yeah, yeah, the so. The toolkits and everything. Yeah, the, so the first time I made like real money with shoes was there was like a, there was an add to cart link yeah. in the Discord, they would send it. Yeah. And I clicked it, it was automatically in the cart. And so I just bought this pair, it was the like Alva, I think it was Alva 700. And I paid 200 retail. I posted the order confirmation in the want to sell chat, sold it for 400, five minutes later. That's when it paid came. up front. That's I made 200. Yeah, yeah. So like it was all just used shoes cleaning and then just the drops. So would you say that was the moment when you realized that, okay, it's possible to make money resell sneakers from that one, from those easy seven? Well, it, was, it wasn't like, I had no clue what it would be today, like yeah. to not go to college course, or anything, but I was like, I'd way rather do this than like all my friends are getting normal, like they're like, yeah, just like doing golf courses or like, like McDonald's or like whatever, like yeah. basic jobs, like just working for like a couple bucks an hour. Yeah. So I was like, I'd rather do this, it's fun. I met a lot of my friends, like this was like during COVID too. Mm -hmm. So this is why I moved to a new town going into freshman year. So I didn't have as many friends back then because yeah. it was like a bad time because it was all online. So I met most of my fr friends that I know today online selling shoes too. We we're kind of all in the same boat. So just be on FaceTime for like hours on hours per day, just learning the game and stuff. And I mean, yeah, that's my best friend that I live here with. And then the ones that live around here, just when I met them like ninth grade online, like I never thought that would even yeah, be a thing. I didn't but. know that's a thing either, but like, it's crazy to see how you started from cleaning shoes. You started yeah. from cleaning shoes, getting a little capital, and then you started going in. for, you know, in-store releases, online releases, and then that's pretty much how you got to where you are now. But um, what was that moment when you realized that, okay, like, this is, you know, this could be something that's full time. Like, when do you realize that, okay, mm -hmm. like, you know, sneaker yourself oh. is profitable, but when do you realize that, you know, this could be something where like, okay, you moved out here and then, you know, this is something that's full time and you don't have to work with nine to five. Well, there was one step before that, yeah. and that was the decision to stop playing sports in high school. Because mm -hmm. at the time I was still playing football mm -hmm. and I was doing like basketball training during the summer and stuff. So I would literally go like in August, I would have football practice from like 11 in the morning till like 6 p.m., like two a day football practice. And then I'll have to go from basketball practice from, it was like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So I was doing like three practices a day pretty much. And you can only ship before five o'clock. Yeah. So I'd have to have my dad like just drop them off for me. And I would have to do deals before 11 in the morning, which is yeah. rough because sneaker resellers wake up at one in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, or I would have to grind at night. And then when school came on top of that, it was literally like school from like seven to two and then football from like two, or they actually made it worse. It was like three to like six. So I, and the hour in between was like a joke. Yeah. Cause there's more t the travel from two yeah. from school. Hundred And so I would only have time to work on my business after six, even though I'm so tired from like football and school all day. And I got homework tests, everything like that. So I was like, I gotta make a de decision here to like, I gotta drop my sports. And I, w I wasn't like bad, like I was, I started both sides of the ball, like I, I was I was decent. Uh, so making that decision was hard. 
like my coach was like, he was like, you shouldn't do this. Like you can work the rest of your life. Like, and I was actually like debating, like going back and switching play football still, but making that decision, like changed everything for me. So would you say your coach kind of influenced your decision on quitting football? Just no, no, the opposite. The opposite. He basically, I told him like I, cause I didn't want to just not show up to practice. So I called him, I texted him like, Hey, can I call you? I called him like, I, I don't want to play anymore because I want to take my business full time. And he was like, that's going to be like well, the worst decision ever because you know, you, you only have so much time to play football, but you can work the rest of your life. And I told him like, this isn't work for me. I literally can't wait to get home to do this. Like, and time is money within this business because yeah. you're working with drops. You have certain times to ship. Like you have to be doing a lot of work for it, you know? So uh, that decision there was hard for me, but that was the biggest thing going forward because I had all my time back. And that's when I started scaling way faster. And going into that like junior, senior year, when I stopped playing sports, mm -hmm. it really took off for me. And that was kind of when I started Sire, the, the pre-development stages of it. And we're gonna get into that later. Yeah, that's later, that's yeah. later, but uh, I mean, yeah. So I know a lot of people, like for example, viewers out there, like everybody in the sneaker space is, I would say the demographics, uh, the audience is fairly young. Uh, because I started my business in high school, we started business in high school as well. So like, um, and you know, hearing from your story, it really seems like it really takes uh, a significant sacrifice for you to make for you in that instance is quitting football, right? So um, for anybody that's trying to scale their business, um, would you say that sacrifice is necessary to happen in order for that business to like scale or just um, for that breakthrough to really happen? 100%. Like I think like, I mean, cause even like, I think it's just having that thing in the back of your mind. Like that's kind of the decision of not going to college is cause like, yeah, I could have done online. I could have done like less classes or whatever, but I still have on the back of my mind, like I have this homework to do. I have this test in a week. Like if you want to really take your business to like making millions, you can't have all these other things going on and you have to simplify like your, you're, there's so much business, there's so much work in your business mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Like adding these additional things is just going to hurt you in yeah. the long term. So, and I was already making enough to kind of be like, no job would have paid me this. So like, so when you were quitting football, what grade were you in? At that that time? was sophomore year. So sophomore year, you already had the mindset like, this is what I want to do full time. Well, not like, yeah. not well, going junior year when college stuff started coming around, that's when I was like, really against it. I'm like, I don't want to go to college. Like, and everyone, like all my friends, all my family, like, were like, nah, you should go. Like, it's too risky. And I just kept pushing back. My parents finally kind of like eased up on it, but it did take a while. And I still had a lot of weird looks from my friends. Like, there's no way you're actually gonna what do was, that. I just knew it was what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I go to college, like if you go to college, it's meant to either get a job, you yeah. know, or like yeah. it's something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why well, I don't want to get a job. Like, yeah. so I was like, I was just kind of like, you know what, in the worst case scenario, you could always go to college. You can always, and I was like, with the current skill set I, skill set I already had at like 16, I'm like, I'm sure somebody would hire me. Yeah. Cause when I look to hire, I'm looking for qualities. I'm not looking for like crazy achievements of like, oh, I went to Harvard. Like, I don't really care. If you're lazy, I'm not hiring you. You exactly. don't have the skills for what I need. I'm not going to pay you. Exactly. So I think too many people that have like really good college degrees are kind of like think that they're like entitled to like a certain amount of pay, even if they're not doing enough work, you know? So I don't really think it matters like where you come from or what school you went to or how much money you have. Like if you have hardworking mentality, and you put the work in, that like that's that's everything. All right, yeah. So now we just got to the warehouse with my guy Ethan. Yeah. So here we are. These are this is my friend's warehouse. Uh, I come here time to time, you know, just my friends I made online. This is one of my friend's little spaces here, and then kind of going to here. This is a big space here. Uh, a lot, all my friends kind of run their businesses out of here, and I used to like from time to time like send out shipments here back when I lived in Michigan. Um, when I first started botting, actually I sent a lot here into all my, my friend Kyle's houses, like his neighbors and stuff yeah. to avoid the sales tax. So uh, that was a big thing for me when I was starting. And then you um, want to talk about like how you met those friends. Was it IRL or was it all Yeah, yeah, none of them are IRL. So like I met everyone online uh, during COVID, uh, just through Discord chats, Instagram engagement chats. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing anymore, but it still is. It still is. I have one myself, so it's still definitely yeah. is a thing. Instagram engagement chats were big. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just people I met online. I didn't think anything of it back then, but now they're like my best friends to date. 
and like clearly they're doing well. Uh, we got the warehouse here in New Jersey. So, I mean, yeah. And how a, important do you think it is to have like a strong network and strong circle for you to, you know, keep pushing yourself as well? Well, when I first started, it was a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Like, cause if there wasn't other people, like kids at my school, yeah. they couldn't really relate to me with like the business side and everything. And like, they just wanted to party and do all like the normal kid stuff. And so my other friends that I had online, you know, the glitches in the math, yeah, they're kind of hard to find. <laughs> so, uh, you know, finding those people that could kind of, I could relate to was, was really big for me because it made me feel like not alone in this. And we all kind of grew together. I mean, we all started really small and now like I'm doing things with like software outside of sneakers a little bit too. But I mean, clearly they've scaled up sneakers a lot. So. I mean, having that network, especially when you start, is like a huge thing going forward. So I know you have Sire now, but do you want to let people know what Sire is about and also when you start Sire? Yeah, so I started Sire about like early sophomore, or senior year of high school. I started the development stages of it. Uh, I got scammed a lot, like a lot up yeah, front. Yeah, yeah, like probably over 30,000 at first of just like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like any business, you fail a lot when you start especially because I didn't have a coaching program or anything like that guiding me. So it was kind of all just on my own failing. And so I would pay developers and they would just kind of not do enough work or I didn't really know how to code. Like I didn't know any of the back end stuff. So people, I would just pay to see like what the front end showed me, but really in the back, it was just a bunch of garbage. So I got scammed a lot at the beginning and that's kind of what took uh, the time at the beginning to like build the software. But the, the main idea of the software was I saw myself and a lot of other resellers not really knowing how much money they were making. There wasn't much automation to the industry. It was kind of like, you are the whole business. And I always thought of something as like, I want to be able to go to trips to like, yeah. like Dubai or like, yeah. or like Miami for the weekend and yeah, like still freedom. make money, you know, like that real financial freedom. So I always was setting up things like when I first started the automation cycle, I was, I basically built a Shopify store and I built custom scripts to like, I would have all my inventory in Shopify and then it would sync to Google Sheets for wholesale. And then if I sold something, I would create the order in Shopify, would take it out of there. But not only am I synchronizing it for wholesale, it would also be sold on Amazon, eBay, and even Shopify for normal customers. So I was basically selling all these places at once without like dealing with the marketplaces, you know, individually. So I always thought that was a really good business model for me and I wanted to give that to other people. So originally I built Sire for myself, like what I was saying, and it kind of just, I sh was showing people what I was doing and people were like, yo, I would pay for this. Like this is something really valuable. So then I launched the inventory management software um, and it's still up to this day, um, but we also added a shipment side of it. So people that need to ship out their orders with sneakers or any business model, um, you know, they need UPS, FedEx, USPS, International DHL, they can go on the shipment app and ship out their orders. So they're kind of separate, but you know, Sire is now becoming like an ecosystem, not just a single product. So that's kind of the current issue. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned that you started Sire during senior year of high school. And during that time, you were definitely still reselling sneakers pretty heavily, yeah. right? So um, what business model were you in in sneakers? And also just let the people know how much, like what the numbers were looking like before making that decision of not going to college. Yeah, so at the time, this was at the beginning when I didn't understand development. So I was paying a lot more than I should have almost every dollar I made was going back into the Sire. And this was like hard for me because going up to the decision where it's like, am I gonna go to college or not? When I was, I was making around like 35K or so like profit from the sneakers at the time, every month. But the thing is I was putting it all back into the inventory management mm -hmm. software and not getting any money out. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a little risky at that time, but I had a longer term vision for it and you know, at the time I was wholesaling, uh, middlemanning or sneaker drop shipping as people call now. Yeah. Um, mainly just buying from other resellers, wholesaling to stores, using my my network, which I talked about earlier, it's really valuable. Um, and just kind of leveraging my connections to make money. And that was pretty much the business model I was doing leading up to college. Got you. So what, what do your parents think about, you know, you're not going to college at first? Well, at first they were really like, well, you work so hard already. Like yeah. there's a college fund, like, you know, we did all this work with you, like tutors and stuff all throughout your school. And now we're just kind of like wasting it all because I'm not going to use it. And so that was kind of my parents' original mindset of it. And as time went on, when I kind of showed them like 
the progress with the app and like this is a real company I'm building and sneaker money kept getting larger and I'm like here I, I love this I'm making a lot from it like for my age like this is something I could see myself doing forever and scaling to something bigger with the sire ecosystem that I want to build and so my parents finally kind of came around to it it definitely took a little little bit of time but they eventually came around to it yeah so what was that like negotiation process like <laughs> well it was more just like they're like I, I i didn't even want to do my sat oh. like it was bad like i was like i'm not doing any of this i'm not gonna go like and so i did them all i did all the tests i did everything i ended up like applying to colleges i got into pretty much everywhere i wanted were, to go and he was good at school it was not yeah good, like not i had good grades, grades like three nine gpa like pretty good, pretty good grades and SAT and all that. And I could have went to college, you know, like perfectly fine. And that was, it was kind of, that was more of the difficult part for like me and my parents is that like, it wasn't like I didn't have an option. Like I didn't have an option to go to school. Like I, I completely had it there. So to give it up was harder than to not have it at all, you know? Yeah. Would so, you say you have any regrets not going to college zero. other than the financial aspect of things or no? No, zero. The lifestyle I have is, I, I mean, I don't know what it is for college, but just seeing it from an outside perspective, it's like, I pretty much, I travel every week. I live with my best friends I met on the internet. I get to do cool things like this, YouTube videos, and my friend's massive sneaker warehouse. Like, I don't know. I couldn't imagine doing anything else, you know, just. And how does it feel to have that lifestyle at the age of 18? Because I, don't, I know you're only 18 and like average 18 year olds right now are just going to college, getting into shares, working nine to five. So like how different does it feel to have this lifestyle to acquire it at such a young age? Um, are you scared that you're going to experience too much too early? Or mm, I mean, yes and no, because I feel like there's so many levels to this game that's Definitely. like, I haven't yeah. even touched anything. Like think of Jeff Bezos or yeah. something like those guys are like, I'm like, like so far away from that. So it's like, I know I just have an early start to it, which I'm grateful for. And I think that's what the internet has provided for people is like back then, like when our parents went to college, like there was no internet, there was no like phone. So like, if you want to learn how to start a business, you actually have to read books and where are you going to get those at school or like you have to pay. So now there's just way more, there's online schools, there's courses, there's YouTube. Like you can learn so much online and your network can be expand so much. Like, if I was limited to just the kids in my school and just like the stuff I learned at school, like I would be, I wouldn't have probably learned any of this stuff till I was like 30. So like, obviously for our parents and stuff, it's it's really weird for us to kind of start this early, but they also didn't really have that access that we do now. Yeah. So I think it's kind of along those lines. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken, now you don't resell any sneakers. You pretty much mainly just focus on the software, which is higher. Um, so when do you realize that, you know, you want to stop reselling sneakers and just fully put your time into Sire and um, yeah, what was that process like? Well, it was a lot more learning about like company structure and like how you can actually sell a business. And I never saw my sneaker business being able to be sold. Like, cause realistically, if all the profit I was making from like Sire, if I never kept that and I just put it all back into the business and eventually I sold the business, like you can't really do that with sneakers. It's, I mean, you probably can, but if you're at a massive level and it's, it's a lot harder at least than software, I think, at least for me, maybe other people it's different, but at least with my vision, because I always thought very like, how do I automate this long term thinking? And I was like, I want to focus on this. I see a lot more potential for this. So and that was like a hard decision to kind of like, like fade out of sneakers, like selling. It was just because like the amount of time and effort and capital I had to put into sneakers to keep it as a real like business. It's just like I didn't have enough time or money to do both. So when I really thought about it, there was times where it's like I dropped from making like 50K a month to like 10, yeah. and it, but like, you know, now it's like better. So I just saw like a, a longer term like system for me. And so that was kind of the decision there. Yeah, so let's just say you didn't quit sneakers. Let's say you continue reselling, you you know, you put the same amount of effort into, you know, reselling as you, you're doing right now in Sire. Do you think you'll be able to do better in sneakers than Sire right now? I think with my current experience, probably, but it's not something that would be sustained for me. Cause like, I think at least with software, it's like you can't kind of gain a customer and you can you can create a bunch of different products that that one customer can buy. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, the inventory management, the shipment, and then other things we have planned, one customer can do all of those things and we could have an infinite amount of customers into that ecosystem and not add a ton of extra expenses yeah. or, or work. But with sneakers, if I want to make more money with sneakers, 
I need bigger warehouses. I need more fulfillment. I need more workers. I need more equipment. I need more buyers and sellers. Like there's a lot more variables to it and capital. Don't forget sure. about that. So like, you know, I just, I thought it'd be, it'd be much better for me with my experience to kind of scale with software. But today, today's day, I would probably make more of sneakers, but I don't know how much longer that would be for. Okay. And where do you see the sneaker market going in the next four to five years? Because as we all know, the market right now is extremely low. It's very tough to make money if you're a beginner. If you're just starting out today, I would, I would honestly argue that I would rather them go into a different business. Um, but yeah, like where do you see the market within the next few years? Do you I think see it's gonna oversaturate or do you think it's gonna keep growing? Well, I think it's about adapting to the market. So like, at least from what I've seen, like with all my friends sell shoes still. So like, I see a lot of things changing where it's like, it's not like the Jordan 4 Yellow Thunder selling anymore. It's more the Asics or like things like that. It's more kind of gone to like, re instead of buying a shoe at $200 retail selling for 400, it's about buying a shoe for 20 bucks under retail and selling it for 10 bucks under retail, but moving a thousand of them. So it's a volume scheme. It's volume and it's different products. At least from the way I see it, it's more like boutique backdoor stuff, not retail drops. Yeah. So you kind of have to pay under retail. So it's not like reselling as much, it's yeah. more like, buying it from a wholesaler yeah. and then selling to, it's just a different way yeah, of reselling. It's a, it's so. a different market nowadays. nowadays. Um, but yeah, I mean, how much time are you really putting into your business right now, Sire? I mean, a lot still, like probably like eight, 10 hours a day, I don't know. Like, I don't really measure it, but I mean, I kind of like, when I'm working, I don't really think of it as much as work because I'm kind of always working. I'm always taking calls or emails or making deals, finding new people that want to ship with us manage our inventory or like new connections with carriers or even just influencers and stuff like that. So it's kind of like throughout the day I'm doing work and then there, it's not like I'm, I go to my desk at nine, get out at five. It doesn't feel like a nine to five. Yeah, no, it's like all day, but not all day. It's something that you, you enjoy as well yeah. as you're, you're progressing as you work. Yeah. Um, so what keeps you motivated right now to keep working every single day? Because um, a lot of people, it's hard to stay consistent. A lot of people, they can't stay consistent. So like how do you keep yourself staying consistent and how do you work every single day? Just get up just to keep pushing. I've had problems with that where I've gotten really comfortable yeah. with what I was making, the amount of work I was doing. And I'm like, I, and then I, I switch back and I'm like, yo, what are you doing? You're yeah. crazy. Yeah. So like, I always just set a, a bigger goal and I'm just like, I have to hit that goal. And it's not for anybody else. It's just for myself. It's like, like the amount of work, like I don't want to disappoint myself when I first started because I know that kid, like he yeah. would never thought, well, it's going to be here today. And now it's like, I don't want to disappoint myself from five years from now. Like you could have been doing this at this time, but you got lazy and now we have to start now. Like I want to take advantage of every minute that I have because like if you think of brands or companies, like most of their like strong suits, they've been in business forever and you know, you, Today is the soonest day you can start. You can't, it, even if somebody has 10 years of experience in the industry, like you can't go back 10 years, but you can start today. You can always do that. So that's kind of how I think. Yeah. So this, besides the standards that you set for yourself, do you feel any like social pressure at all or no? I try not to. Um, I don't really, no, not, not really, because like, I don't really care what people think of me. Like I don't care if somebody's like, what are they gonna like talk down on me for? Like, I, I just like, like if somebody's talking down on me, I'm just like, well, what do you, unless they're doing something so much better, which like, I mean, if they are, then cool. But like, I just don't care. Like someone's gonna say something regardless. Yeah. So let them say something good about it. So yeah. yeah. So not too long ago, like literally just last year, you were, in, you were still in school, right? Yeah. So how much did that, how much did your lifestyle change? Because it's, it's crazy from what you're telling me. Last year you were still in school, staying in the classroom and now you're, in a whole different state on your own with your own apartment and now you have you know a bunch of friends that are doing the same exact thing as you same mindset so what's that like i mean it's crazy to think that it was only like a year ago today i graduated pretty much around this time and yeah it was crazy i was still like in school waking up at like 6 45 to go to class yeah. in my parents house like there's definitely changes like now like i don't wake up at 6 45 i wake up at like nine and you know instead of going to school like I just work on my business from my house. Um, you know, it's definitely a different transition. Instead of like my work day used to really start at like two o'clock because I was in school, got out. Now it kind of starts right away. And my life is a lot more free. Like I don't have to worry about like being tied down to school. Like I can like go on trips whenever I want because I can work from my computer for most of it. 
So, you know, I get to travel a lot more. I've got to expand my network a ton. I've met a ton of new people uh, that are also in the business, just like doing their own thing, whether they're in college or out of college, dropped out, whatever, you know, that kind of, pe uh, those kind of people that are trying to grow. And, you know, I mean, I got my own apartment now. I don't live with my parents. So I learned a lot about like living on your own, like how to budget everything, how to kind of live like a life, you know, like, yeah. like for the future. So I think, I've gotten to that pretty early and I'm grateful for that because, you know, I just think of it as a head start compared to the average. Like a lot of people don't get to experience that this early. So like what's been the biggest challenge so far? Uh, Other than business, like yeah, what's been yeah. the biggest challenge so far? Biggest challenge so far was like the original like switch from my parents' house to here. It was like very like, it was, I mean, I was moving with my friend. He was kind of going through the same thing, so mm -hmm. it helped, but I think it was a little nervous for both of us, you know, because now we, we have consistent bills we have to pay. Like before, the only thing I really had to pay for was my car and like food if I went out, but I didn't have to pay rent on my house or anything. So now I have another big bill over my head. I have to pay for insurance, utilities, all my own food if I have like cooking and stuff, like furnishing the apartment. Like there's a lot of things that I didn't realize. And you know, it was just like, I have to understand how to like manage my time and like, like since I'm not getting a stable income from a job, like it's up to me how much I make. Yeah. And if I'm lazy, like I'm screwed. Like I have a 12 month lease I gotta pay every month for. And I have people relying on me. My staff like literally relies on me for their for their pay. So like, yeah. if I'm lazy, I'm, I'm letting a lot more people down in my team and you know, my roommate and all those. So you people. would say it's bigger than yourself at this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And how much are you currently spending on like personal expenses, such as like hotel, uh, such as like traveling, food, you know, rent? Like, what's that looking like right now? Um, it kind of depends because like I have a ton of credit card rewards, yeah. so like I pretty much travel for free, like hotels That's and insane. flights, uh, with my credit card cash back. Um, my rent, I split it, so it, it's around 5k a month for that. So that's a big expense that I had to add from my house. I have to pay for my car, uh, the Tesla, it's like a thousand or so. Um, and then food, I don't really know total like how much I spend a month. Probably around like maybe like six, seven k or so on personal expenses, just like to live. I mean, it's expensive to live on your own. It's like crazy to think about like when I have a family, like dude, I got stuff in my game. Cause I gotta pay for like everyone, everything, college, like if they're gonna do that, you know? Yeah. So there's a lot more to it. So that's kind of what I'm preparing for now is like uh, like a family later and all that stuff. I wanna make sure that I'm kind of set up for like the longer term. Cause at least when I was like in high school, my parents were always like, are you gonna be reselling when you have a family and your kids and you're like 40? That's I'm true. like, you have to think like actually that long term because you're like, if you have no stable money coming in, like there's more people relying on you and like, you know, you can't just, you can't just do nothing, you know? Yeah. So, so let me just ask, did you always knew that you were gonna get to this point? Like, not at all. Not at all. No, I literally started for fun because I wanted money to then buy other shoes to build my collection. Yeah. That was literally it. That's like, the same reason for myself as well. <laughs> yeah. So I never knew. You never thought about being an entrepreneur or anything like that until you really like started. Not yourself. like a real one. Maybe yeah. like just for fun on the side. Like I always did like lemonade stands. I had the kids car wash in like yeah. fourth grade. I did a can service with my friend. We would have a wagon go around the yeah. neighborhood, like just give people's cans and like give them five bucks or something like, and just resell the cans. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, yeah, never nothing. Like I could see myself like not going to college, not having a job, doing it full time. So this is like pretty much still not all new, but like you're surprised that you're, you have achieved this much at this age. Definitely from like when I first started, like from the beginning of high school to now, I would have never thought ever, like in a million years. No way. Especially with the software stuff. Maybe like reselling sneakers like big, but like never outside of sneakers. Like I never really thought that way. So no. no. So what about with Sire? What's like the future goal and what's your main focus for the summer? Yeah, I just want to build like the ecosystem of, of other products to help any business model, not just sneakers. Like I've been pretty stuck to sneakers. I want to expand any entrepreneur and give a platform for like a, a normal kid like me when I was 14, 15 years old, the opportunity to make money online. And I'm currently working on that right now to kind of help like sell my products and build, build that pipeline for them and kind of, you know, have that as a way for them to start making money. Cause I think like, like when I first started, I never thought about what I'm at now. So I think it's about just getting started and kind of learning from there. So I think I want to give that to people and help inspire people to like go start that business, go, 
like even just make that first step because once you're in, like you get, you get pretty like addicted to it. You really want to keep seeing it grow. More viewers for chasing the edit. Blue stripes, I'm stripes for something.